Hey guys, it is Saturday afternoon here in the Philippines, so it is time for us to do our weekend showcase video. And as promised, we're bringing you a bunch of muscle cars that we don't normally take a look at. I think a lot of these we've unboxed and that was it. So we haven't brought a lot of these back for like follow-up videos. So that's what we're going to do today. Some of the, I guess I could call them outcasts that normally don't get shown, will get shown today in this Muscle Car Madness video. So we've got over 20 cars to take a look at. We've got stuff from Auto World, Green Light, Johnny Lightning, and Hot Wheels. So we've got kind of a smorgasbord of different manufacturers, different types of cars. Predominantly they're Mopars because you guys know that's my uh, reference for muscle cars. But we still have some Chevys and some Pontiacs. Fortunately there's no Fords here. Um, so forgot to bring out some Mustangs and stuff. Um, a lot of my stuff I've been putting away because we're planning on going back to the States next year. So we've been kind of going through stuff and packing stuff away that uh, I normally don't use for videos. Even trying to get rid of some stuff to make the load a little lighter going back to the States because of the shipping cost. It's a little bit crazy. So this is what I have for you guys. We've got about 20 of them, as I said. And this looks like small town America, Saturday night car meet. So pretty cool layout. Just kind of gives me that nostalgia feeling of like the 90s or the early 2000s when I would go to car shows with my dad on the weekends. For that matter, even during the week. They had a lot of car shows. There was always somewhere to go like every night of the week during the summer if you had a hot rod or muscle car. So I remember doing that a lot with my father growing up. So anyways, let's go ahead and get started with the ones we have here. We've got some off to the side that I'm going to bring over and show you. So first one we'll start. And this is a Johnny Lightning from 2001, as you can see on the door. And this purple chrome is beautiful um that's one of their holiday cars from 2001 actually um they had a lot of these in the early 2000s every year they would do a holiday series and they would use this chrome color paint and it's absolutely beautiful uh and as you can see they really chromed out the motor here where it's usually painted blue but because of the holiday chrome theme, they chromed the whole engine, which is pretty cool. You have even your, uh, no, I guess the tires aren't. I was going to say the tires uh, say something about the holiday, but they don't. Um, just regular BF Good Wrench Radial TAs. So this is a 64 GTO two-door post. Actually, the rarest of the three models released. There's the hardtop, the convertible, and the post car, the two-door sedan. They made less of those than even the convertible. And this is what is supposedly the first muscle car, the mid-size car with the big engine and stuff. This is supposed to be the Pioneer, the 64 Goat. So, really cool piece from Johnny. Next one is an early release M2 1970 Super B. I really like the paint job on this one because usually you don't see them like black with like an orangish red stripe. They usually have like, I don't know, white on black or they have white paint with black stripes. So the typical stripes are usually white and black, but the orange or red is kind of rare. So this is a black on black 70 Super B with red stripes pretty cool m2 does a nice job on the mopar rallies and you have your double scoop hood and the hood does open on this guy with nicely detailed it looks like they got a hemi down in there the way the valve covers are painted black so really cool car doors open on this one and this is one of the very few M2s where the door gaps and such all line up perfectly. But this is back in their early days when I think quality still meant something 
to them. But after they got everybody hooked, they started lacking on their quality control, it seems to be. But yeah, this one's perfect. Even the axles and everything, it's perfect. So that's like one of the very few M2s that I have that I can say is perfection. The early chase stuff I have is actually perfection too, but it seems like, I don't know, maybe after 2015 or so, the company started to decline on uh, their quality control. So, next car. And actually, I have two from this series, so I'm going to bring him over to kind of go in correspondence with the 67 RT. So, this is your first year for the RT. 67 Dodge Coronet RT. And this is actually a really cool looking car. They did a great job with everything except for the grill. As you can see, even the tail light panel and the deck lid has that louvered, like pop metal die cast inserts like they originally had. Dodge emblem, everything looks perfect perfect then you get to the grill and they didn't do shit with the grill so it looks pretty bad they did do the detail with the rt badge and then the headlights are painted white the grill is silver but they didn't put the lines there i don't know why i have a couple 67 rts and they're both that way nicely detailed engine opening hood and such the red paint was something to signify the mopar anniversary series that they did they have a few really nice cars in this series uh the 67 rt and then we'll be taking a look at the challenger next uh and then there was a 70 charger i think there's also like a 68 charger there's as i said like five or six cars in the series i got two of them to show you guys but this is an awesome casting plastic roof because they use this as a convertible casting too kind of like their cuda but this one is much better with like the plastic insert type roof because the body lines correspond with it pretty good. It had these really sharp edges on the roof and B pillars. So with it attaching to the body, it kind of corresponds well. Um, it does look like the roof was separated on these, especially with the trim that they added. So this one is not so noticeable like the Kudas. Um, so next one in that series is your 70 challenger uh this is the rt let me move this camera over a little bit guys that way i can kind of get it to focus a little better there we go so same like burgundy or maroon paint this one has the black tail stripe black vinyl top and black hood stripe rally style hood and this is a rarer one because you don't really see a lot of green light e-bodies with magnum 500 wheels usually they have the rallies so really cool to see that and then you can see it either has a 440 or a hemi in there and then nicely detailed um sometimes they're a little bit off when detailing their wheels as you can see the front wheel they kind of missed the inserts where they're supposed to be painted but overall still a pretty nice looking car now going to Auto World. So Auto World, we have a 67 Chevelle here in Marina Blue. This is one of my favorite years of the Chevelle. Love 66 and 67. 66 was my first car, actually, and it's a car that I remember my dad having. Uh, his was tubbed out pro street car that we took to the Super Chevy show quite a few times. And then mine, I kind of just started doing the restoration and never finished it. So... Uh, never really even drove that car, but when we brought it home and then I sold it before I finished it. But, uh, anyways, I was like 15, I think. I didn't even have a license. I wasn't even old enough to drive when I had that car. But, anyways, a lot of good memories in my life about muscle cars and things I did with my old man, um, during my teens. So, this is your 67, and this is your Marina Blue. This would be on the serial number, a 138 code. Um, there's the 138 and 136 for 66 and 67. The 136 is your Malibu. And then the 138 indicates that it is a true Super Sport big block car. Super Sports in 66 and 67 only had big blocks. There were no small block. All of them were 396s with three horsepower options. The 67 had... The three and a quarter, 350 horse, and 375 horse. 
What's unique about the 66, they had the 325, but the mid-range one was 360. I don't know why it dropped 10 horse in 67. I think it was just cam specs. I think they changed something with the camshaft. I think the overall engine, like your heads, valve size, and carburetor size, all that was the same. I just think they changed something with the cam, possibly. Um, but yeah, this is one of my favorite colors from 67, the Marina Blue. Always love this color. So I always love the wraparound tail lights on the 67 versus the 66, but I like the 66 front end a little better. And we'll go ahead and take a look at the 66 from Auto World. That way you can see what I'm talking about. See how the 66 is just a little more defined. It's not so flat, and you have the hood that kind of goes down a little bit. And the grill is a little bit thinner on the 66. Um, but besides the front clip, everything else is the same on the 66 and 67. Even the tail light area, the housing's unbolted. So all you had to do is change the housing, and that was it. So, but I do favor the 67 tail lights. They always reminded me, I think why I like these so much, I remember growing up as a kid and my grandfather had a Lincoln, like a 78 or something like that, or 80, I don't remember. But it was the big Continental with like the half wheel openings and it uh, had the same tail lights as like a 67 Chevelle. So I think that's why I favor these, just because of the childhood memory of my grandfather having that Lincoln from the late 70s. Uh, so anyways, back to the Chevelle, the 66. This is pretty cool. The color, I'm not sure what they call this, um, but the details are great. They did a fabulous job. On the 66, as you can see on the tail panel, the SS emblem's kind of offset a little bit. And this is a hobby exclusive. As you can see on the plate, they put exclusive. Uh, this color and such was anyways. And Chevelle and then the SS staggered off to the left, or right, I should say. In 67, they centered it and got rid of the Chevelle emblem. Um... 66 is like the first year for like Chevelle on its own as a Super Sport. 65, they had the Super Sport Malibu and they were kind of toying around with it and such. 66 was the first year like a full blown like Chevelle SS or you had Chevelle Malibu. So, um, kind of an iconic year for Chevelle's, the 66. So, anyways, uh, moving along to some A-bodies. So, we have our Green Demon. So, this is the original Demon. This is the first one, too. 71. 71, to let you guys know, like, the differences, which are very subtle. 71 has a split grill. Also, 71 has recessed marker lights. Um, the 72 started where the marker light was... Um, how can I say this? Like, it was just basically, like mounted to the quarter and the fender. Uh, there were three holes, one for the light bulb to go in and two for the studs to go through and you put a nut on them. Mopar used that same marker light on every single car they made, even some of their trucks uh, from 72 until probably 89, maybe even the early 90s, they still used them on some of the Rams. Um, so yeah, they kind of were trying to get... Uh, more bang for the buck, I guess you could say. In 72, they started doing those money-saving things where the uniqueness and marker lights went away. 68 was similar. 68, all of them had round marker lights. Prior to that, a lot of them didn't even have marker lights. But 72 on up, they all used that same uh, like surface mount marker light, I guess I would call it, um, because it was like protruding. It wasn't recessed. It was actually sticking out because it was surface mount. Um, so nicely detailed car, as you can see down in there, little 340, uh, nice stripes, dual snorkel scoops. And what's cool, they did add mirrors to this one. Not totally correct, but still yet, they're there. These would have had like pedestal style mount mirrors even if they would have been the rally mirrors. Um, if it was the base without a rally, rally mirror option, it would have just had the little round chrome mirror, like typical muscle car, I guess, mirror. 
Uh, now, what's unique about the dusters and demons, the quarter glass did not roll down. They popped out, kind of like an extended cab pickup used to. They just kind of popped out. They did not roll down. This one looks better than their duster with that fact. Uh, but the rear wheel openings kind of look a little off on this. Love the demon tail lights, the slots. Um, 71 and 72 use the same. So the only difference between the 71 and 72 are marker lights and grill. Um, so here's your duster. Duster also had that same thing with the marker lights. Uh, duster started a year before the demon. These appeared in 70. Uh, then in 70 and 71, they're pretty much the exact same car. I honestly don't even know how to tell them apart. Uh, they have the recessed marker lights. This is the rare grill option, what they, which they called the shark tooth grill. Uh, that's kind of an option for these. This also has the bumperettes. Has the 340 decal on the hood. That's why it does not have scoops. If you got this stripe, you did not get scoops. You could not get them together. Um, as you can see, it would interfere with the scoop. So... Anyways, uh, this one has the go wing, and as I mentioned, the rear wheel openings on this are much more correct, because the quarter panels on a Demon and Duster are the exact same thing. They're universal. Like, if you had to replace a quarter on a Duster or Demon, when you order the replacement, it says Duster, Demon, blah, 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 like 70, 71, and then 72 to 76, although Demon was only 71 and 72, but the duster and then they had the dart sport that took place of the demon and the interesting story about that was because i think a lot of churches were protesting that name and dodge pulled the name and changed it to dart sport so anyways uh that is your 70 or 71 duster i don't remember what year but this is from the gold series they really did a nice job on these from johnny lightning detailed chassis Really detailed engine compartment, but Johnny always did a nice job on the um, engine compartments. So that's one thing I will give them. But on the Gold Series, they went the extra mile and detailed the chassis, which is pretty cool. Uh, we actually have a 71 satellite that I'll bring over, and it's from the Gold Series. Love this car. This is one of my favorite castings that I have. This is actually one of the best-looking 71 satellite castings, or 71 Roadrunner, uh, GTX, or satellite. They're all the same car. Just different trim options. But anyways, this is the best-looking casting on the market, except it's just a little bit too narrow. The length isn't bad. Um, as you can see, we'll do a comparison with... Outer World. Outer World 73, 74 are spot on, and they're pretty much the same as a 71, 72. As you can see, the length is exactly the same. Where Johnny screwed up here was the width. The width is just not there. It's so just a little bit off, not a lot, but enough to make a difference where this does not fit in well with others in the dioramas. But the casting overall, the car, the detail setting off on its own is beautiful. And this has the painted bumper option, which I think is really cool looking. And then you have the uh, air grabber hood. As you can see, the hood, the um, scoop is halfway open, which is kind of cool. Uh, this also has that really nicely detailed chassis because it's from the gold series. And it has the opening hood with detailed engine. So that gold series is really cool. Another thing that was really cool, and I had the package for the duster right here. The packages they gave you are actually reusable. They're like a protecto pack for like the cardboard card stuff. They just kind of open just like so. And your car goes in there so you can open them, display them, or and then put them back in the package and it doesn't hurt the value for like carded collectors or something because they're not sealed so that is pretty cool and that's from back in i think 04 or something when they made these and that was like uh i guess you could say like kind of before its time um with collectors and such so that was a great idea by them but anyways um moving along to some more auto worlds since we already took a look at this 
Roadrunner. We'll go ahead and look at him closer. So this is the one like A and B release. This off yellow and then this root beer maroon color. Uh, these were A and B when they were released together. These are the only ones that I've acquired when I was here. So while I was here. Um, so really nicely done. As you can see the paint job. The strobe stripe across the roof. Um, with like the hockey stick stripe going down the side and then the Roadrunner hood. Uh, they did a great job with these cars. Fabulous job. The only thing I have against Auto World is their Mopar rallies. They suck, in my opinion. They don't look so good. Um, but their overall castings are beautiful. So, let's see if we can get this to focus because I don't remember what the plate says. Uh, 74 Roadrunner. 74 RR. Okay. So let's get the hood open here if we can. Yeah, there we go. So they even do the correct color of the block and everything, the blue with like the orange air cleaner and such. So Auto World goes the extra mile at the engine compartment. They do better work than anyone else on the market in 164th for engine detail, in my opinion. They do great work. And usually their hoods line up decently, so I don't mind the opening hood on the Auto Worlds. So, yellow one, the same thing. I think it's the same plate, too. Let's try to get her to focus. Yeah, 74 Roadrunner. Kind of dig this, like, off yellow, kind of like I call Pell yellow with the black stripes. Looks pretty good. Reminds me of, like, Daisy Duke's. Roadrunner from the Dukes of Hazards, but I believe hers was a 71. So, really cool car. Um, yeah, so we're going to speed it up. Now, the challengers we have here, besides the green light I showed you earlier, these are ones I don't show often. Now, green, or not green light, but Auto World nailed it with the Magnums. They did a great job. They look fabulous. This is their 72 Challenger Rally. Uh, details in this are fabulous and opening hood detailed engine compartment really glad that Auto World uh, took initiative and made some of the later like early 70s cars like the 72s to 74s whereas nobody else was really touching them so really cool to see some of these models and see that they're going after like some of the big boats the, like land yachts as they call them with the big caddies and everything really cool so this yeah was just focused in if we can get it to focus again yeah, it says challenge me. So pretty cool. So nice looking car in like the hemi orange white interior. And then we have the eggshell white one. That was also the counterpart to that one, like A or B. So pretty nice looking car. Also same plate, challenge me. So you can tell it came from the same A and B release and then opening hood nicely done so the next ones we have are well let's go back to the a body this i forgot to show you guys this is a b7 blue very close to b5 especially on this scale it almost looks like b5 but it was b7 on the package this is your 71 Dart from Auto World. So, trying to get it to focus for the plate. Nah, let's zoom in. Instead of trying to keep messing with it. So, blue sky. Yeah. All right, so blue sky. Anyways, still pretty cool um, that they have the vanity plates. So it looks good with the white top and the white tail stripe. Uh, once again, I wish they would improve their Mopar rallies or put magnums on them or just put hubcaps or something. <laughs> so, But anyways, uh, 
it's a nice tribe, and they're not that bad. It's just, but they're not that good either. They just look too small, in my opinion. Or maybe the other ones are too big, and I just got used to seeing them that way. But like even Johnny Lightnings are better. Just there's more def definition. They're more of a reversed offset. I, I'm, don't get me wrong. They shouldn't be like a, a reverse. They shouldn't be standard either. Kind of like just regular. See, there's Johnny again. And they did a pretty good job on him. Uh, and this is my Chrome 71 Swinger with the hood scoops, the go wing, and pretty cool car. Um, love the chrome stuff. This one, the hood reaches for the sky when you open it. So it's uh, very uh, flimsy and opens very easily, unlike most of the cars you have to kind of force the hood open. So pretty cool. With the all chrome finish, I have a Monte Carlo Aero Coupe like that, and then my Super Chase Daytona and Roadrunner and such. So then we have our green light. 71 CUDA. This is a 340 CUDA with all black everything. I call quad black. Black vinyl top, black interior, black paint, and black billboard stripe. Uh, this is a Graveyard Cars one, and this is one that reminds me of the Phantasm CUDA. Uh, it also has the painted bumper option, has the rear window louvers, which is really cool. Shaker hood. This is a well option 340 CUDA. Like you would usually not see all these options on anything but like a Hemi CUDA or something like that. But for a 340, this is very heavily optioned car. Looks really good too. Uh, green light, I think overall has the best Mopar rallies. Followed by maybe M2, then Johnny Lightning, or Johnny Lightning and M2 are kind of equivalent. But overall, I think Green Light has the best looking ones. Uh, the only problem is when they do use the rallies, they have really wide tires. The tires are too wide. But I think that's how they get that really good look to the rally wheels. So from the side profile, looks dynamite. But like when you're looking at it like front end on, the tires are really wide. It looks like a nascar or something with the wide racing slicks <laughs> so still though very cool car then another one from graveyard cars the 70 plymouth roadrunner in plum crazy nice looking car 440 and this one doesn't have a air grabber just the bulge hood so kind of rare to see that i would say Looks good with the Magnums. And then the Magnums have the proper tire width when they do use those. Now, here's a 69 Roadrunner from Greenlight. And this is your 446 pack liftoff hood, although it doesn't have a liftoff hood. It just opens its hinge. But they did get the four pins right. Uh, looks really good with the Steelys, the way the 446 pack cars came with the red line tires. But they have really wide tires on the still rims. As you can see, this is a 70, but same thing. Same base, pretty much, that they use. But you can see how much better the Magnums look. They're the correct width. But still yet, I don't really complain too much about the extra wide tires. Because the detail on their wheels are very, very nice. So, a really cool car. Love the 446 pack cars. Especially the 69 Super Bs and Roadrunners with the liftoff hood. So really cool. So just a couple of bonus ones. Uh, here is a 64 Goat from Hot Wheels. This is from the Ultra Hot series. And this is the very rare wheel variant. They're, the most common one has like the chrome steel look. Well, actually I have the Roadrunner to show you guys. That wheel. It has those wheels. That's the common one with red lines. This is the rear wheel variant. You don't see this one too often. Uh, very cool series. They had a lot of really cool 64 and 65 goats in that Ultra Hot series. Nicely detailed grill and such. This is also based on the post car opening hood. This is a great super treasure hunt too in 2011. Still got to find that again. Uh, as you can see, detailed tail lights and such. Love the wheel combo on this one. Looks great. 
Then this, I forget what series this is from. Actually, I think it tells us right on the deck lid here. Editor's Choice series. Okay, so this is like from Hot Rod Magazine series or something from the early 2000s or late 90s. I forget when this casting was introduced. It's the 70 Roadrunner. Um, it probably was the early 2000s. It appeared as a super treasure hunt in 08. Not sure when this was... I think the first one appeared maybe in 98 or 99. So this is probably from like 2000, 2001. Actually, it'll tell me on the bottom the first appearance. If I can find the copyright. That's usually how you know when it was introduced. And it just says 70 Roadrunner Thailand. I think it's there 1999 it looks like. So, that was the first appearance of the car. Anyways, this is from the early 2000s. Pretty cool with the dark plum color, the silver stripes and such. So, it looks really good. So, guys, that is going to wrap it up for this episode. Those are the last two. Uh, I had a couple others, but um, I'll just bring them over and show you. That way, you don't feel robbed. That was the car in the... Um, Thumbnail photo, and then I think this was also in the thumbnail photo, but we just don't have time to go over the details on those two. So, hope you enjoyed this, guys. I will be back early uh, next week with some, M, uh, not M2, but Mini GT stuff. I got the two new exclusive GTRs. We'll be unboxing them, and I got a lot of other new stuff, but I want to do that uh, GTR showcase, so... We'll go over it next week. Whenever I do these new GTRs, you guys will like them. They come in a special little exclusive box. They look great, so we'll do that next week. So enjoy your weekend, guys. Thanks for watching, and I will talk to you early next week. Ethan wants to say bye. Say bye, Ethan. Okay, Ethan don't want to say bye. So thanks for watching, guys.